Let's get started. Thanks for joining me here today on this session of how to say fuck being fine by December 31st. Kind of uh, another way to phrase it, how to find peace of mind amidst the chaos. I am your host, Lori Seitz. I am, in case you don't know who I am, I am the CEO and founder of Zen Rabbit and the host of the podcast, Fine is a Four-Letter Word. I'm known as a stress eradication expert, and more recently, I've been playing around with the title of Inspirer of Courage. So yeah, I'm the one who's going to hold your hand and kick your ass at the same time to help you transform your life from raging dumpster fire or even, even a small flame of discomfort to completely focused and calm no matter what kind of crazy is going on around you. So in the next 60 minutes, I'm going to walk you through these powerful steps that you can use to make better decisions, strengthen relationships at work and at home, boost resilience, enhance your sleep, and reduce your stress. All for the price of nothing. I mean, <laughs> the techniques and tools that I'm going to share with you cost nothing to use. So it's kind of a good deal. The tools I'm sharing will work for you individually, or if you are part of a team, you can share them with your team members as well. And, um, and, uh, put them to, and everybody can benefit from them. So, uh, you're going to get actionable steps that will get you results really fast. So I am going to get to the point during the session. It's going to be fun. I will cover it in as much detail as possible, and we're going to do this together. And then at the end, hopefully, I will have provided you with enough value that you give me the opportunity to make you an offer for something that I think you're really going to like, okay? So how many of you, and you don't have to raise your hand or anything, we're going to do some participation later, but how many of you are going through life right now saying everything's fine? It's just fine. It's fine. Fine. Yeah? Um. And then I know some people are uh, are like, yeah, it's what I really want to say is everything's kind of a shit show, but I don't want to know. I don't know what to do about it, so I'm going to tell you everything's fine because I want you to think that I have it all together. So, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. So uh, this is exciting because if you do nothing more than participate in this session on this call right now. Even if you don't implement any of the techniques that um, that I teach you, you are still going to raise your vibration. Your energy vibration is going to increase. And when your energy increases, it positively affects all of the people around you. This is exponential. So let's start with a grounding exercise. I love starting all of my coaching sessions and workshop sessions with a kind of a grounding you can stay on camera, you can go off camera, you can close your eyes or not close your eyes. Well, let's start with breathing in and feeling the air come into your lungs all the way down to your abdomen, like a really deep breath. Breathe in, fill your lungs up with air, and then release it. And then kind of relax your shoulders a little bit. Let's do that again. Breathing in really deep. Breathe in, breathe in, breathe in. Can't take in any more air. And just let it go. And again, kind of feel your, your neck relaxing, your head relaxing, your shoulders. We, we tend to be shoulders up here next to your ears. And you don't even realize you're walking around like that. And then one day you're like, man, my back hurts. Why is that? Well, because you've been hunchback of, of Notre Dame all these year, all these hours that you're not even paying attention. Okay. So one more time, breathe in, breathe in, breathe in and release and relax and kind of let everything in your body settle down a little bit. Now just, and, and you can go back to breathing normally now and feel your forehead and your brow, feel them relaxed. We hold a lot of tension in our brow. 
sometimes uh, that just, not sometimes, always, just, just that quick exercise in about 60 seconds reduced your stress level. We oxygenated your blood and basically the blood in your entire body. And we refreshed your whole mind in less than 60 seconds. You know, we live in a world that is filled with chaos. Would you, would y'all agree with that? Yes. Chaos, chaos everywhere you look, <laughs> whether it's in your personal life or it's in the world around you, we, we kind of live with a lot of chaos. And so there are a million things distracting you and trying to scare you and take you off course and emotionally destabilize you. You look around and people are not happy, even though they say that's what they most want in life is happiness. And yet most people don't have it. The thing is, you are in charge of your own happiness. You get to choose your outlook you get to choose whether you want to be happy or not. It has nothing to do with outside circumstances. We're going to get into that a bit more in a moment. The challenge, however, is we often don't know how to change our attitude. No doubt you've heard the phrase attitude of gratitude, right? Yeah. Attitudes are a choice that you make in how you look at situations in life in general. So gratitude, again, is a choice. It's actually about recognizing the value of something regardless of its monetary worth. One of the leading researchers on gratitude, Robert Emons, defines gratitude or he explains grat gratitude that it's an affirmation of goodness. It's a recognition of blessings, of gifts, of well-being. You can choose to find gratitude in what's going right, or you can choose to criticize and complain about what's going wrong. Now, I don't want to get too woo-woo here because I am known for making gratitude practical and accessible and easy. Gratitude is the highest energetic vibration you can reach. It's gratitude and love and joy are up there on the scale of energy. And this is like uh, science, like we are energetic beings. We're made from energy. Science talks about that, that, uh, that, that everything is energy. So when you're operating from an energetic level of gratitude, it's kind of like firing on all four cylinders. And I'm going to get more into the science behind gratitude in a bit and how it applies to stress and productivity. But first, let me back up and give you a little bit of a brief background on how I got here and why this is my jam. I started my first business in 2003. I was making a product called the Gratitude Cookie, which was based on a family recipe I was marketing as a way for businesses to say thank you to their clients and people who sent them referrals. I was talking a lot about using gratitude as a differentiating factor in business. Now, the irony of all of this is when I started that business, I wasn't a very grateful person. I had a business based on that concept and I was very focused on what I didn't have, what I couldn't do, what wasn't going right, all of the problems. And one day my mentor and friend, now friend, Paul Martinelli said to me, listen, Lori, you know that book, The Science of Getting Rich by Wallace D. Waddles? I don't know if any of y'all have heard of that book before. It's, uh, it was written in 1910. And in that book, chapter seven is on gratitude. So Paul challenged me. He said, I want you to read chapter seven every day for 30 days, once in the morning and once at night. It's like the chapters are short, three, four pages. I said, sure, Paul, I'm up for that challenge. And so I did it. And at the end of 30 days, this miraculous thing happened. You want to hear what it was? Yes. Okay. I got a call from an editor at Oprah magazine, and she wanted to put the gratitude cookies in Oprah's favorite things. How amazing is that? 
right? Like that's a major celebration. Yeah. Okay. That didn't happen. I'm, I'm just pulling your chain, <laughs> but I got you. Yeah. Uh, no, really at the end of, of 30 days, nothing noticeable happened, but, but a few months later, I was driving home from a friend's house at Thanksgiving. It's kind of ironic, not ironic. What's the word? Coincidental. Interesting that it was on Thanksgiving. And I was driving home from a friend's house. It was late at night, driving up I-95 in South Florida. Smoke starts pouring out of the front of my car. I managed to pull off the highway at the next exit. And there was a gas station that was open. So I pulled into the gas station and, uh, and we called roadside service. And then we had to sit and wait for an hour or two for the tow truck guy to show up. Now, normally I would have gone into a rant. Like I, I'm, I can see some of you may have, may, may be able to relate to me here. Like, I can't believe this is happening. This sucks. Why does this happen to me? I, you know, hair on fire rant. But what happened instead was I immediately went to gratitude and I thought, thank goodness we were able to get off the highway safely. And thank goodness we're only five miles from home. And thank goodness the tow truck driver is coming to get us at 1130 on a holiday night. And that's when I noticed the power of gratitude. So coming back to Oprah, she is quoted as saying, be thankful for what you have. You'll end up having more. If you concentrate on what you don't have, you'll never have enough. My point here is that even if you are not a naturally grateful person, you can become one through practice. Step one. So going back to that idea that ultimately everyone just wants to be happy, imagine walking through your typical day and interacting with the people that you normally interact with, your family, your coworkers, your clients, your vendors, how often are you hearing people say how great their day is going? Not all that often, right? Yeah. What are you more commonly hearing? How crappy the busy, day is. Busy, 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 busy. Oh yes, I'm so busy. I'm so, oh, don't get me started on that word. But... <laughs> But people talk about like how bad the weather is, how bad the economy is, how bad their day is going, all of those negative things that don't contribute to making your life more fun or more pleasant, pretty much the opposite. So this is why we see so much stress and burnout and distraction and conflict and unhappiness. People say they want to be happy, but they're not because look, they're stuck in these situations where they only see the negative. Most people are constantly operating from this very low level of energy. They keep reinforcing that low level of energy by watching negative news and engaging in gossip and criticism and judgment and focusing on and stressing about exactly what they don't want to happen. Now, I'm not standing on a pedestal because I'm working on my own stuff too. We all are because we're human. So we do these things. But you attract what you put out. You attract what you what you put out, you attract back to you. And when there's no feeling of love and appreciation there, then if that's not what you're putting out, that's not what's coming back. Now, what would happen if you could infuse some gratitude and positivity out there, if you could add more gratitude and positivity into the world. You know, as well as I do, that you can only change yourself, right? You, you can lead a horse to water. You can try to influence people, but you can only change and influence others by leading by example. So if you can find gratitude in every situation, you're going to raise your vibration and your level of feeling good. And then 
when you start sharing your gratitude with other people, that's how you start raising their vi- their vibration as well. It works both ways though, right? Have you ever been in a, a room or in a situation where you walk in and you're feeling really happy, but somebody else is in a bad mood and they're complaining, it's a lot easier for them to pull you down than it is for you to pull them up. I don't know why it works that way. (laughs) It's almost like you need five times the positivity to counteract one negative thing. Yeah. So I'm going to invite you to participate in an exercise right now. And that is to write down five things that you're grateful for in your life right now, or five things that happened in the past week that you're grateful for. And I say five things that happen because often it's easy to get stuck in like, well, I'm grateful for my family and my pets and uh, like the, the most obvious things. And there's, that's cool. You can be grateful for those things. Absolutely. And can you stretch a little bit more and come up with things that you wouldn't normally think to be grateful for? For example, someone holds a door open for you. I'm grateful that person held the door open for me. I'm grateful uh, someone let me in in traffic when, when it was in really busy traffic and I was trying to merge. And you're welcome to put those things in the chat if you'd like, or you can just keep them to yourself. It could be a warm cup of tea. It could be that you woke up this morning. You know, it doesn't have to be really big things. Like I'm grateful I have a million dollars in the bank. If you do, then you can put that. Uh, It could be that I feel good and I'm grateful for that. For some people who are in a, uh, a place, a dark place, it could be, I'm grateful I got out of bed this morning. It's, it's whatever you can reach for at this moment where you are in your life right now. If anybody wants to share, cool. If you don't, that's cool too. All right. Can you hear me, Lori? Yes. Oh, okay, good. I was having a hard time um, getting on. So I just want to make sure you can hear me. I can. Okay. <laughs> thanks nice, for, thanks nice. for being here, Melody. Well, thanks for having the class, the yeah. workshop. My pleasure. All right. So <clears throat> let's talk about how gratitude works on your physical body. Because when we're talking about changing your energy and your vibration, it actually changes your physical body. Gratitude can strengthen your neural pathways. Not can, it does strengthen your neural pathways. It strengthens how your brain is wired. When you practice gratitude, you're actually changing how your brain is wired. Gratitude causes the release when you are expressing gratitude or feeling gratitude. It causes the release of feel-good chemicals, their dopamine, serotonin, oxytocin, which in turn can help reduce physical pain. There was a study that was done in 2012 uh, that was published in a publication called Personality and Individual Differences. Not something I read on the regular, but I found this study and it showed that Grateful people experience fewer aches and pains. Practicing gratitude improves your sleep quality, especially when you focus on those things that we that maybe you just wrote down as you're falling asleep. Before you fall asleep, as you're falling asleep, once you get into bed, it reduces the cortisol, which is the stress hormone. And it increases the effectiveness of your immune system, which would make sense because if your cortisol is lower, your immune system is stronger. And your, um, yeah, excuse me. So those are just a few of the things. And then on a psychological level, level, going back to 
Robert Emons, again, in his research, he found he's done a whole bunch of studies on the links between gratitude and well-being and found that it boosts your emotional health, improves your ability to feel empathy for other people, and it reduces aggression, which makes sense because if you have, uh, if you have more empathy for people, you won't be as aggressive towards them, which will enhance your relationships. And that's relationships across the board. It's with clients, with coworkers, with family members. It builds resilience. Resilience is a big buzzword these days. Uh, we hear a lot of talk about building resilience. Gratitude can improve your self-esteem and reduces social comparisons. The reason that <clears throat> excuse, the reason that is important is because we're all so saturated in social media, and most of what you see on social media is somebody's best day, somebody's best something. And then you're comparing that to your worst. And so that doesn't do a whole lot for your self-image and your self-esteem. But when you're practicing gratitude, you're less likely to make those social comparisons. And the other thing it does is it helps you appreciate other people's accomplishments more. So when you do see somebody on social media sharing something that was that's great, uh, then you're not feeling bad about comparing yourself to them. You're actually feeling good for them. And then you're there to support them. And then that increases your happiness and their happiness. And again, you're raising the vibration of everybody around. So uh, I don't want to quick caveat, I don't want to say that uh, I'm not giving medical advice here, right? Because some people are still going to need some kind of medication to raise their their brain chemical levels. And I'm not talking about that. This is like a, a booster to that. Um, gratitude helps with all of these conditions. So overall, gratitude can change the way you see yourself, the way you see the world. I've already shared that if you're not a naturally grateful person, you could become one. Then the question is, can you find gratitude for everything, everything in your life, everything, even the stuff that doesn't seem like it would be something you'd be grateful for. But one of the exercises that we do as part of the entire Fuck Being Fine program where I have participants write gratitude letters, three gratitude letters to people who have affected their life. And I am inviting you to do the same thing, not here on the call, because that's going to take too long. But think about this exercise to do later. One of the participants in my program, Amanda, came to me after we talked about this, and she said, I don't have anybody to write a letter to. I don't have anybody who's still alive. I just really can't come up with three people. I said, well, if you can think of even one person, See, see what you can do about thinking about one person. And she came back a couple of days later and she said, I wrote a letter to somebody that I used to work with in the corporate world. And this person had bullied her so much and made her so miserable that she ended up quitting her job. And she wrote a letter to this woman to say, thank you. Because had this woman not forced her to leave that job, she wouldn't have gone out on her own. And she was finally realizing how impactful that was. And I get kind of choked up when I talk about this because she came back and she said, I feel like a weight has been lifted off of my shoulders. I've been carrying this burden for years. I've been angry. I've been resentful. And I wrote her this letter realizing how much gratitude I have for forcing her to make forcing me to make that move. And that has brought me to this point in my life where I am now so much better off. And it's truly like a burden has been lifted off my shoulders. That's the impact that sharing gratitude can have on someone else and on yourself. So in that case, it had an impact on her. I actually don't even know if she sent the letter, but it doesn't matter. 
when, if, and when you do send it to somebody, whether it's, you know, a situation like that, or it's somebody that you have that has affected you in a more, po- well, that was a positive way, but somebody, uh, it will impact them as well. Like had she sent that letter, it would have impacted the other woman as well. And it's, in, it's as a third party, you hearing about this story now is raising your vibration as well. So I encourage you as step one or step one and a half, because we already talked about step one (laughs) to handwrite a gratitude letter. And if you absolutely can't find a mailing address, email works. And even if the person isn't still alive, you could still write a letter and get those feelings out because it's going to do a lot of good for you as well. All right. The second step is finding connection connection to your family, connection to your colleagues, connection to your friends, and most importantly, your connection to yourself. Humans are wired to connect interpersonally. And when we can't or we don't, it causes all kinds of physical and psychological problems. In one of the early episodes of my podcast, Courtney Bowles talks about how her experience with not having any friends and feeling so disconnected and how that affected her mentally and emotionally. And we can talk about networking and connecting with others. And that's a whole other part of the fuck being fine experience that I offer. But where I want to focus right now is what could be considered the most important connection of all. And that's the connection to yourself and to your higher power. What whatever you want to call that, God, Jesus, universe, it doesn't matter because that's where you access your own inner truth. You get clarity on what you want and what will make your life fantastic. And you know what? That's not the same thing for everyone. Do you remember the movie City Slickers? Did you you ever see that movie? Do you remember Billy Crystal's character, Mitch? Mitch is asking Curly, the cowboy, what is the secret of life? And Curly says, oh yeah, there's just one thing that matters in life. Do you remember what he said? Mitch said, Mitch was all excited. He's like, what, what is it? What is it? Tell me, what's the one thing? And Curly says, that's what you got to figure out. (laughs) What will make your life fantastic is not the same for everyone. And on top of that, I believe our one thing can change over time. That's why you got to stay connected to that inner voice so you can hear what your one thing is. And one of the best tools I know for connecting to that inner voice is meditation. When I was 10 years old, my mom took my brother and me to a meditation course that's now known as the Silva Method. As grateful as I am for that foundation, I did not use it consistently for like 30 years, probably more than 30 years. I'd been exposed to the benefits of it. I'd experienced the benefits of it and I still didn't use it. And here's something funny. When my friend Christine was going through her divorce in 2010, I think it was, I recommended that she start meditating and she did. And it helped her feel more calm and grounded and connected. But did I get back into the habit? Nope, 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 nope. We humans can be really stubborn sometimes. (laughs) A year or so after the combination of my mom's passing and my closing of that first business, the gratitude cookies, a book came into my world. It's called The Code of the Extraordinary Mind. That's right, Don, do as I say, not as I do. Code of the Extraordinary Mind. It was written by Vishen Lakiani, who is the founder of Mind Valley. I don't know if anybody's familiar with that company. Mind Valley is a personal development company. So in his book, he talks about meditation and visualization and how it became the foundation for him and for his success because it allowed him to make connections that he would never have otherwise made. Come to find out later that the meditation program he was talking about 
was the Silva method. The same one I learned when I was 10. There's a reason so many high-performing business leaders and athletes feel so strongly about practicing meditation in any form. It doesn't have to be Silva method, any form. We're talking about people like Ray Dalio, Bill Ford, chairman of Ford Motor Company, Ariana Huffington, Jeff Weiner, who is uh, the he of LinkedIn, Joe Rogan, Lady Gaga, Hugh Jackman, LeBron James, the list goes on and on. There are just so many positive benefits to it. You know, for a long time, people considered meditation kind of a spiritual practice, kind of like prayer, which can also be considered a form of meditation. Or they thought it was something that just woo-woo hippies did, sitting on mats in an ashram for 18 hours a day. However, now there is a whole bunch of supporting research and documentation on the topic. So because meditation can re reduce anxiety, it also increases your resilience. You spend less time mulling over past mistakes and worrying about what might happen tomorrow. How much time do you spend worrying about what might happen tomorrow, the next day, next week, next year? We spend a lot of time in, in that worry state. Meditation can enhance your creativity. When you're in a more meditative, relaxed state of mind, that's when you get your greatest insights and your greatest breakthroughs. Have you ever noticed like when you're in the shower or you're out for a run? Yeah, like your mind is kind of turned off and all of these great ideas come rushing in and it's because you're in a more relaxed state. So brain imaging shows that meditation helps regulate your emotions like gratitude. It boosts your emotional intelligence and you develop greater patience with people and situations. So I mentioned earlier when we were writing down things to be grateful for, maybe somebody let you in in traffic. Well, maybe you're the one who's now letting somebody go in front of you in traffic instead of trying to run them off the road and say, why the fuck are you trying to cut me off? <laughs> Anybody want more patience? <laughs> you become less likely to react impulsively and get frustrated in emotionally charged situations. You're able to maintain that peace of mind regardless of what kind of chaos is going on around you, which means you can also make more logical decisions. You're going to be better at decision-making. So from a business standpoint, that makes sense. In addition to regulating your emotions, you feel like you have a, at a better connection with people. You become kinder, more compassionate. You can connect with your clients or your coworkers on a different level and you can serve them better. Anybody have a challenge staying focused? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, you know, I think everybody has, most people have a challenge staying focused. <clears throat> you know, how many emails and texts and phone calls and 9 million other distractions do you have going on? Meditation can help you stay focused at the task, on the task at hand, even if you're not in a meditative state. So <clears throat> it helps you figure out what information is important and what's not. What do you need to pay attention to in conjunction with improving your, improving your focus? So one of the things um, I was going to talk about in a minute is, uh, well, let me say first that it helps improve your memory, which makes sense because if you have better focus, then you're retaining more information. And so all of these benefits contribute to making those, those high-performing business leaders and athletes who they are. So, but what's the number one reason why people don't practice meditation? Why I wasn't doing it. Do you know what it is? Dono, Melinda, Beth, Melody, who wants to jump in here? Time. <laughs> Melody, go ahead, Melody. Oh, um, in the morning, I, I think I heard this on your, um, one of your podcasts is in the morning, just sit very quietly yeah. and things come to you. 
So I usually like would watch um, something like Joyce Myers or whatever. And once I heard you say that, I I get up in the morning, I just drink my coffee and, and quiet. Mm. And, and then I can um, concentrate better and focus better during the day because I just let myself wake up easily and listen to that small voice inside. Mm. But I think I heard that on one of your podcasts. Awesome. Awesome. So what do you think is the reason if anybody, uh, Mel- Melinda said time, why people don't practice meditation? Cause there's all these research and these, the great reasons around the importance. So why isn't every business person, generally person on the planet practicing meditation? It strikes me as it doesn't provide a tangible result that I can say, oh yeah, that I can write with or, you know, whatever it's, yeah. It's an intangible result that improves other things, but. That's interesting. Okay. Yeah. I haven't actually thought about that as one of the reasons I, it is time and it is, uh, I've heard time and I've heard, I can't quiet all the thoughts in my head is another reason, but I like yours too, Don. as yeah, it's intangible. And I think that's what I was trying to get to was, you know, I don't have, I feel like I don't have the time, but when you said that on your podcast, I'm like, well, I can do that. You know, Uh I can quietly without any distractions while I'm drinking my coffee. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that the distractions is, I call that puppy mind. It's like, how much energy does a little puppy have? He's all full of energy. And that's what happens with your thoughts and your, your thoughts are running all over the place. And a lot of people say, I can't meditate because I can't control the thoughts in my head. And the thing is that one, you manage the puppy by acknowledging the thoughts, the puppy and the thoughts. (laughs) Yes, I see you there. I see you. Okay, I gotcha. I see you. And then you come back to your breathing. Come back to the sound of the meditation teacher's voice. Come back to the music, what your mantra, whatever it is. And you might have to do that every 10 seconds. Here's the thing about why it, um, why that's okay. It's actually part of the practice. That's why it's called a practice. And you get better at it as you do it more. But it's actually an integral part of meditation. That's the part that people don't get. Like it, that is part of meditation is bringing your mind back and bringing it back and bringing it back. Kind of like a baby learning how to walk. They, they stand up, they fall down. They stand up, they fall down. They take, a, take one step, fall down again. Beth, you're probably watching this right now with your granddaughter. Stand up, fall down. Or actually she might be a little, soon she'll be at that stage. Um, <laughs> but the baby, at, any, at no point does the baby go, you know what? I'm done. This walking thing is not for me. I just, I can't do it. I'm not in for it. It's kind of the same idea. You keep practicing it. And that, so when we're talking about getting, becoming more focused, when you are bringing yourself back to focus in a meditation, you're teaching yourself, even when you're outside of a meditation, you're teaching your mind how to be more focused. So when you get distracted, your mind comes back quicker to the task at hand. And this is why meditation is, uh, practicing meditation makes you more efficient and effective at everything you do because it helps you focus. So, um, and it coming back to the time thing that you mentioned, Melinda, is there, you don't need an hour a day. What if you could do it in 10 or 15 minutes? And by taking those 10 or 15 minutes, you were, again, more effective, more productive the rest of the the day. If you're familiar with the idea of sharpening the saw, there is a quote from Abraham Lincoln about uh, if I had, if you give me six hours to chop down a tree, I'll spend the first four sharpening the ax. The sharper your ax, the less time it takes you to chop down the tree. So if you're using meditation as a way to sharpen your saw and you spend 15 minutes a day and what used to take you three hours now only takes you two hours, 
hmm, that's a pretty good trade there because you actually made up some time. Uh, yeah, so meditation helps you rewire your brain. And as I mentioned, gratitude as well. It allows you to take back control of your brain. You get to decide what you're feeding your mind and how you're programming your thoughts. And if you're not deliberately programming your mind, you're leaving your chances of success to randomness and hard work alone. Are you okay with those odds? All right. So meditation, one way to rewire your brain, to program your, yourself for success, to say, fuck being fine. Um, when I first started working with Tracy, her main goal was to find peace of mind and to be able to find calm no matter what was happening in her life. And she had a lot going on. She was going through a divorce and she was struggling with guilt and shame of breaking up her family. She was stressed about finding a place to live that she could afford. And she was working a job that she liked but it was consuming 60 hours a week. So she just wanted to feel calm no matter what was happening. And she got that for sure. And then she, what also started to end up happening was she started manifesting experiences that she was visualizing. Uh, my client Jeanette told me that she was one of those people who initially thought that meditation was sitting down and closing your eyes and letting your mind go blank. And it was really hard for her to do that. So then she'd beat herself up for not doing it right. But once she started listening to some guided meditations, so I'm going to recommend guided meditations, she found this new sense of peace and clarity. And what she wasn't expecting was, again, as she went about her days at work, she was getting better at focusing and letting go of distractions in her business. So, um, yeah, when you infuse those visualizations and the feeling of gratitude together, now you're amplifying things. And this is how coincidences start happening frequently, how puzzle pieces just start falling into place. And it, it seems like magic, and maybe it is. It's kind of like a magic. I, I posted the other day on social media that when you are connected, like I had, I'll call it random, but I don't know that anything is random or coincidence of things, things just start falling into place. I, I had a friend who was happened to be in the same, so I'm living as a nomad. If people don't, and I didn't share that part yet, um, because I'm going to get into talking about courage in just a second, but the courage to leave my apartment and go out and live as a nomad and live in different parts of the country, taking care of cats everywhere. So my friend happened to be in the same area, but we don't talk all that much. It was kind of random that we had a conversation and she was going to be 30 minutes away from where I am and that we could get together on Sunday and spend the day together. But I, that, I attribute that to the being connected and allowing things to show up for you. Sometimes that happens even when you're not connected, but it happens way more when you are. It's kind of like setting a GPS for your car and then uh, like you're telling your subconscious mind how to figure out, you figure out how to get what I want. If I want to spend time with my friends, then my subconscious mind can go figure out the how. That's not our domain. Um, you just take the steps that you see in front of you, the one to two steps, things start unfolding from there. Um, cause it's not about just taking random action. It's about taking inspired action. And when you're connected in that way, you are taking inspired action instead of just running on a treadmill, not sure where you're going. All right. So you can be in a state of gratitude. Let's move to the third step. And that third step is, is courage, courage. Remember, who was it that wanted courage? It was the, the cowardly lion in the Wizard of Oz wanted courage because you can be in a state of gratitude all the time. You can have the most amazing connections with other people and with yourself, and you still need to find the courage to move off fine. Because let's fake it, face it, face it. It's freaking scary. I mean, 
don't let anybody tell you that it's not because it is. Fine feels safe. Fine feels secure. Fine feels comfortable. Feels like a warm blanket. It's getting cold now, depending on what part of the country you're in or what part of the world. You know what it feels like to be all snuggled up in that warm blanket, not want to get out? Courage is the opposite of all of that. However, courage is where you're going to find your ultimate joy and fulfillment. So you have to take the leap. You can't have it both ways. Yes, I want to have it both ways, but you can't. You have to employ courage and you have to jump. Sometimes you don't have a choice. Sometimes you're pushed from behind and you're flying through the air. Either way, you need courage because you can't see the ground below. You have to trust, you have to have faith that the parachute is going to open and you're going to land safely. The good news is you don't have to do this alone. The people in the fuck being fine experience choose to hold my hand and in the group program, the hands of the other people in the group, because, you know, running your life and running your business is challenging. So let's recap the three, the three simple steps. Anybody want to share what you've gotten as your key points so far on what those three steps are? One is... Find gratitude in everything. Oh, are you typing them in, Dawn? I don't want to disturb you. Okay. <laughs> what What are the the three steps? I uh, practice gratitude, find connections, and find the courage to move. Yes, those are those are three of them. Actually, I've, I've, I said that, you know, in the title, it was three simple steps. I've actually given you way more than three, but those three, gratitude, connection, and courage actually make up the trilogy for success that is the foundation of the Fuck Being Fine group experience. So, uh, yeah. So if you're struggling right now with the question of what's next for me and how do I start living in calm instead of where I am now, which like I said, it doesn't have to be a, a like raging dumpster fire. It could just be a, a slow simmer of something doesn't feel right here. Where do I find the courage to take the next step? And if you'd like to get to a place of that unprecedented passion and clarity and peace, I have an invitation for you and I have a free gift for you as well. So if you're ready, and I get it, not everybody's ready and that's okay. But for those of you who are, I'm going to invite you to come work with me in the 10-week Fuck Being Fine experience. Program is designed to help you achieve transformation quickly. So within a few weeks, you're going to be rewiring your brain to keep you calm, keep you focused, and allow you to be more productive. A lot of people are talking about time management as the way to achieving more. My belief is you can't manage time. You can only manage energy. You can only manage your own energy. And this is how you do it. The other part of that equation is you need courage. Again, people are talking about developing self-confidence. You, you need clarity around where you're going and you need the courage to take the risks that will get you to where you really want to be. I was doing a podcast interview earlier today, which will publish in January with Jen. And we were talking about the most people know what it is they need the courage to do, but it's stuffed so far down because it's scary, because you might disrupt the apple cart, so to speak, that they, they, they hold on to, like, they're just holding on to what is. And change is inevitable. Like you can't stop it. Change is life. So if you could surrender to it and step in, like find the courage to do the thing, because the other, what's the alternative of not doing the thing? It's getting to the end of your life and looking back and going, man, I regret, 
I wish I had, I, you know, I should have whatever. That's the alternative. Uh, you don't even have to necessarily wait that long. I mean, who knows how long we have, but it doesn't have to be the end of your life. It could be uh, just living the way you're living now. Like, is that okay? Like, is that okay for the rest of your life? So I've given you a solid basis today to get started saying fuck being fine. And some of you can take this and be off and running. Most people need a bit more time to rewire their brain and create new habits. Plus there's that courage part that often takes some handholding to be able to take the leap. And I'm here for you on that. So this program includes weekly group meetings for 10 weeks. It includes the Staying Calm in Chaos audio program. It includes five guided meditations, short ones, 10 minutes. It includes Lori on demand texting, which I had a lot of people tell me is their favorite part about the program. It includes a 30 minute one-to-one -one bonus call. And for those of you who sign up before December 24th, it includes a ticket to the 2024 in-person retreat. So once you have those strong habits in place and they feel effortless to you, it'll be like a light switch turned on and you're seeing things in a whole different way. So for those of you who are done living in fine and want to find the courage to step up to the next level of living, the next dimension, if you will, come join me in this program. It's only two payments of $1,650 or one payment of $3,000. And if you would like to get um, even more clarity, calm, clarity, peace of mind before you choose that. I will also put out um, that we could do a 20 minute call and, and talk about if the program is the right thing for you. I can put a link in, um, actually I should have had that link ready to go, but I can put a link in the, in the chat. If you'd like to schedule the, uh, a 20 minute call with me on that. Uh, let's see. Let me just grab that link and do, 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 do. And we can go from there. If you are feeling like, Hey, you know, I don't know that, um, that I need to, that I want to move that fast or that I feel like I could do this on my own. Then they, there is the, um, the staying calm in chaos program. And I will drop the link for that in the chat right here. If you want to get the Staying Calm in Chaos program that, like I said, that comes as part of the, um, the Fuck Being Fine program, or it's a standalone thing as well. It's a quick chat here. All right, so here's the link to sign up or to, yeah, to get on a call with me if you want. You've got staying calm and chaos in there and the call, uh, the link for the call. Either way, I am here for you to help you find the courage, find, uh, to get in touch with that inner voice. One, to get the clarity, to understand where you even want to go, and then to help you find the courage to get there. Does anybody have any questions or want to share any of any feedback on what you heard today? Unmute yourself, feel free. Hop in. Like the gratitude commentary, um, I've dipped my toes in that water several times over the last few years. And I will I will say that when you make someone else feel good, it Helps you feel good. Yeah. So, you know, that's a, I, I get that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Makes and when you good. walk around, people can feel your energy when you're in that state of gratitude and it attracts people to you. Cool. Well, thank you all for joining me. If you, um, I'm going to make a recording of this available as well. So if you want to share it with somebody you think might benefit who wasn't able to make it here today or. Lori, when are you starting this class? Oh, this good, 
Good question. <laughs> the second week in January. As for 10 weeks? Yes. And do you have a time and date? I do not have a time and date yet. Okay. It somewhat depends on who comes into the program and what the schedules are there. <laughs> and then um, what if they can't make a certain time or date? Yep. Every, every one of those calls will be recorded. All the workshops will be recorded. You said yes. Okay. Yes. And yeah, I've run it a couple of times. Um, well, several times, and it used to be eight weeks and people wanted more. So now it's 10 weeks. We may even add on a, a bonus week or two if, if, people, if people want that. And what's the time frame? Is it two hours? Oh, it's one hour? one hour a week. Yeah, not overwhelming anybody's schedule. And what was the time frame at that time that you had then? It was like an hour that, a week. No, I mean, like, was it at six o'clock? Oh, seven? we were doing it in the afternoon. I think it was three to, well, I had different times for different, um, the different sessions, but two, three o'clock, I think it was at two or three Eastern time. Um, and I know, yeah, I may make it later again. It kind of depends on who signs up and what their schedules are. I can be flexible about things. So um, if, if we're working during the day, mm -hmm. um, we're just going to be re listening to the recordings. We can't interact with you then there's no way to in interact on the, with this. Right on the calls. But that's what I'm saying. Like if there are a bunch of people who can't make it during the day, then maybe we do the calls at like four or five. Oh, but then we get an individual phone call with you. Is that what you're saying? No, I'm saying I'd make the group calls later so that it would be at a time that people could participate. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, if you're interested, we can um we can talk about how we can make that work. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. Bye, Dawn. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Thanks for uh, 